Yes, good morning, children. So here we are going to like discuss the poem, The Tale of Custard the Dragon. Yesterday also we discussed this poem, we even read out its text. But before we again, uh, you know, discuss the poem line wise, you know, first let's see like how this poem is a ballad. This poem is a ballad. Ballad is a way a poem is written, you know, it's one of the literary devices also. So the style of the poem, the structure of the poem is that of a ballad. Now the point is what is a ballad? So in very simple words, first of all, ballad is a melodious story. Okay, when story is written in proper rhyme and uh, when it uses all the poetic devices, that is a ballad. Ballad is actually a narrative verse. It's actually a narrative you know, poem, poem which narrates a story. Okay, so first of all, the ballad needs to be musical. Okay, and a poem can be musical only when it follows a proper rhyming scheme. And then there are other poetic devices like assonance and all that also make it uh, poetic. So ballad is first of all a narrative verse. Secondly, you know, it follows a uh, it follows the form of a rhymed quatrains. So there are four lines in each stanza and all those stanzas are perfectly rhymed that we have discussed in this first part also. And the next part about a ballad is like it should be, uh, it recounts the heroic stories with emphasis on central dramatic action. That is like there is to be, uh, uh, the story needs to be about the heroic action of the uh, main character of the story or of the poem. So the, the character, the main actor or the main hero needs to be hero. That is that character needs to be courageous. And it's about the heroic action uh, and uh, the emphasis is upon some main action, central dramatic action is there. And because of the central dramatic action, the heroism of the uh, main actor, you know, comes to limelight. And uh, one thing more, ballads are about the heroism. And yes, with this, with all this comes up a message in the end. So there has to be a message. Uh, the message, uh, some people call this poem, the tale of custard, uh, 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 just a funny poem. But the point is that uh, though there is fun, though there, it seems to be very humorous, uh, yet it, it contains a very deep message. The message is, uh, number one, uh, don't beat trumpets in your own praises. Okay, don't, uh, self-praise is no recommendation. Point is, like those who are actually uh, of some worth, they don't make noise of it. Okay, empty vessels make more no noise. That's the point. So those people who speak a lot about themselves or the people, those who boast a lot about their qualities or about their achievements, they actually happen to be uh, empty from within. So the, basically the fact is that the great people don't make much mention of their achievements or of their skills because they know that the more you know, the lesser you, the more you read, the more you try to know, the more you come to know that the less you know. Got it? So the point is that the more, the great people rarely become, uh, you know, proud. The great people don't boast or brag about their achievements or about their skills. They remain quiet. Okay, basically, and on the other hand, you know, and on the other hand, uh, we people have got uh, to know that uh, uh, all that glitters is not gold. Appearances are deceptive. If somebody appears to be weak, if somebody appears to be, uh, you know, uh, timid, if somebody appears to be uh, something, the reality might not be so. So don't go after the appearances. Don't judge a book by its cover. Okay, many a times we people judge the person or the persons on the basis of how they look or how they pretend themselves to be. So we should be aware of the pretentious attitude of people and we should try to go for the uh, integrity of the character a person shows. And that for that, we need not be judgmental. Okay, instead of saying whether somebody is uh, very brave or whether somebody is very smart or whether somebody is timid, the better is like, let, the, let everybody be one's own because everybody is unique. Everybody has one's own way of life. The point is not to either, uh, you know, uh, make somebody become a hero, thereby judging him or uh, make somebody else 
you know, fall on grounds because of your poor judgment. Okay, so here in this, you know, poem, the tale of custard, the dragon, here the main character, the dragon, is looked down as a very timid fellow by his other companions, including his, uh, including its, you know, master, that is Belinda. So he's always considered as a timid fellow, but when the actual time comes, it's this person only who is able to, <clears throat> who is able to show his courage and enthusiasm. He's able to put up a brave front when the real situation comes. And when that is done, again, he again resorts to the same uh, cozy zone where he doesn't mind being called as a, as a timid fellow. So great people only believe in doing the things. They don't believe in making noise about it. They don't believe in making announcements of what they've done. Okay, that's the message this poem is also conveying. And uh, it's a story about the courage of the dragon. That's why it is about the heroism. And moreover, their ballad is also not a ballad if there is there are no literary devices. So many poetic devices have been used literary devices have been used and they enrich the poem, they beautify the poem. And the purpose of all the literary devices is to make the poem enriched and, uh, and wherever some poetic devices used, it is there to emphasize the theme only, not just to adore the poem. All right, so now let's see the poem. <clears throat> so here is a tale of dragon, tale of custard the dragon. We had started it yesterday, but we can again do it because some students have joined for the first time. Maybe they might have also done, but still doesn't go in uh, revising the poem. So Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a really true little red little pet dragon. So here is the main character. First, we get Belinda, the uh, only human character in this, uh, not only, there will be one more human character that you will come to know. So this Belinda, you know, she lived in her little white house along with her favorite pets, her dear pets. So those pets included a kitten, then a mouse, then a dog, then a dragon. So how many pets are there? One kitten, one mouse, one dog and dragon. So four pets are there. So Belinda lived in her white house along with her four pets. So that was, they were kitten, that is a cat, mouse, dog, and a dragon. So these pets she had, and uh, kitten was black in color, mouse was gray in color, dog was yellow in color, and the dragon was, uh, its color is not shown. So they, these people, th these pets she had, and along with these pets, she had one object that was she had a little red dragon. Okay, uh, a means of transport. Okay, now this now the name of the little black kitten was Ink. So she had also named those pets, and the cat kitten was called as Ink, and the gray mouse, little gray mouse, was called as Blink. The name Blink might have been because of its blinking eyes of the rat, and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. So the dog, which was yellowish, you know. So its color was, its name was also mustard. But the dragon was a coward and she called him custard. So uh, along with the other adjectives, the dragon has been given the adjective of being a coward and it was called as custard. So custard is a name of dragon. So Belinda who had four pets, kitten, mouse, dog and dragon, they all had been named as ink, blink, mustard and custard, right? So children, in these two stanzas, we have seen that even the names are so rhyming. Even, the, even in the names, there is some sort of, you know, uh, melody, ink, blink, mustard, custard. You know, see the rhyming scheme. Ink, blink, A, A, mustard, custard, B, B. So A, A, B, B will be the poetic uh, rhyming scheme of the whole poem. So number one, the stanzas are uh, four. There are uh, four lined stanzas, quatrain, so quatrain is, each quatrain is rhymed A, A, B, B. Okay, because when you'll be asked like, how is this poem a perfect ballad? Then you'll answer like, because it's a melodious narrative. There is a story, story of Belinda and her four pets, and especially the story about the heroic qualities of heroism of dragon. And moreover, the, there, are, uh, there are 
the poem has got quatrains and each quatrain has uh, you know rhyming scheme a a b b uh, poetic devices we will do in the end because otherwise the flow of the poem gets spoiled then so then she had a dragon which was a covet custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and really or truly or dragons on his toes so here the poet says that uh, the dragon uh, appearance spies also looked very fierce majestic if we talk about the kitten that is cat it's very soft to look at it it was not even a big cat it was a small kitten okay we how we can make out like the cat uh, uh, how brave a kitten might have been okay then the blink then a mouse who who doesn't even have stable eyes how can we imagine the mouse to be braver than the dragon and then he they had a dog okay dogs can be uh, fierce but the dragon you know its appearance is very fierce it's it has a very you can say very uh, dominating appearance so custard the dragon had big sharp teeth then it's it had spikes on top of him and scales underneath so uh, sharp teeth and the spikes on the top means a pointed you know those horns on the top and then it's it had scales under its underneath of its body and those scales protect its skin from uh, the dangers and its mouth like a fireplace uh, you people might have seen or known that the dragons emit fire so its mouth was like a fireplace and uh, the smoke comes out of its nose so uh, nose is called as a chimney and uh, actually this uh, uh, you know this very dragon its toes were like daggers like knives okay like pointed knives so the dagger's appearance is very fierce with its sharp teeth spiky horns and then scaly skin with the uh, fire uh, with uh, with mouth you know emitting fire and nose emitting smoke and uh, with you know uh, sharp pointed toes like daggers so he had such fierce appearance so the one who had uh, been gifted by god as uh, with such ferociousness how can this animal be you know timid but it was considered timid why was it considered timid because it did not uh, beat trumpets about its own uh, you know uh, heroism it did not announce that it was very brave because it did not go in for his self praise okay then belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears so belinda was as brave as barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard cried for a nice safe cage so if we talk about belinda then she was uh, considered to be very brave she was she was thought like as if she was as brave as uh, the hub of bears is barrel actually is a drum you might have also seen a big barrel okay a big drum of a big uh, canister of uh, something oil and all so she was like uh, she was as brave as a hub or group of bears like all bears together and one belinda as brave so she has been considered uh, she has been compared to the she has been compared to the hub or group of bears belinda because of her bravery and ink and blink you know they could chase they could hunt the uh, they could hunt they could follow the lions and could kill them this is what they used to say mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage so as far as mustard that is a dog was concerned it was considered to be uh, to be equivalent to tiger in his bravery what kind of tiger the tiger who is very angry and is in the cage okay he is he was considered he was compared to a very angry tiger but custard cried for a nice safe cage but they all used to say that this custard was very timid and whenever there was something uh, you know difficult situation whenever there would be a disaster situation he would run for a cozy corner because he was timid whereas belinda ink blink and mustard they could face the disaster like anything okay 
The point is, who is saying these things that Belinda was uh, like a group of bears or the ink and blink, they could hunt the lions and all. Who was saying all these things? They themselves. Okay, no one else is coming to announce these things for them. It, it is what they considered, they talked about themselves as. Okay, Custard did not say anything about himself. He would just go for a cozy corner and he would sit there and relax. Okay, so then Belinda tickled him and she tickled him unmerciful. So in order to tease or in order to make him get up and become a bit energetic, you know, Belinda would tickle him and would make fun of him. And she would do this in a very cruel manner, in an unkind and cold manner. She would not mind like what, what effect it will have upon that uh, dragon. When you discourage somebody, when you make, some, make fun of somebody, then you are cold, then you are unmerciful. Why are you unmerciful? Because you're not able to make out like what wrong are you doing to the other person to whom you are, uh, uh, to whom you are behaving like this. So this action of uh, demotivating somebody or making fun of somebody is in itself a cruelty, right? Ink, blink and mustard, they rudely called him Percival. So ink, blink and uh, uh, mustard. So all the other pets, including a uh, cat, kitten, dog or the mouse, they would all make fun of him and they would, uh, they would even compare him with Percival. So Percival is a character from the uh, Arthur Connor, uh, 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 his books, and he is considered, he was a knight who was, who was uh, supposed to be very brave, but he was not actually. So he could not prove his courage. So where the writer, here the writer is actually bringing allusion. Allusion is also a poetic device where the writer gives reference to some other character or story to relate the story with something else. So here is an allusion where the, uh, where the characters, the pets are comparing their dragon to him because of his lack of courage. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon. So they all sat laughing in the little red wagon. So all those pets, ink, blink and mustard, they would all uh, become united. They would all, they would all get together in the wagon and they would make fun of the dragon and they would call him like he was a coward or a timid fellow. So all, including Belinda and other, other creatures, other pets, they would make fun of dragon for his being a cowardly fellow, right? And uh, he, making fun of uh, this person was being unmerciful, okay? It was being unkind. So Belinda giggled till she shook the house. Now the point is like, how did they make fun of him? Belinda giggled, giggled is laughed like anything, laughing like children. So she giggled till she shook the house. So she would laugh so loudly, she would laugh so much that the whole house would tremble or the whole house would resound with the sounds of her laughter. Okay, otherwise you can't shake the house with your laughter. But when the whole house starts resounding with your, with your sounds, that is uh, when the whole house reverberates with your sounds, that is as if the house was shaking with her giggling. And Blink said weak, which is giggling for a mouse. Ink and Mustard rudely asked his age when Custard cried for a nice safe cage. So Blinda would laugh her heart out and Blink, uh, you know, the mouse would also laugh like anything and he would weak. Weak is also this, uh, you know, giggling of a mouse. So yesterday also I told you like weak over here is an onomatopic word where the onomatopic word is a word which stands for the sound itself. Where the sound itself is a word that is a, that is onomatopoeia. So the blink, you know, weak and uh, ink and mustard rudely asked his age. So in order to make fun of the dragon, they would ask him uh, his age so that he would feel ashamed of the fact like he was so grown up and even then he was so timid. So why would they ask him is his age to make him realize that he was a grown up a dragon, uh, yet he was so timid. When Custard cried for a nice safe cage. So whenever Custard would go for a cozy corner, whenever he would go and relax in his cozy corner and would not face this harsh world, then all those characters would laugh at him and would make fun of him, thereby asking him how old he was. So then he would always uh, 
he would cry for a nice safe cage he would only ask for a safe cozy corner for himself so children this when custard cried for a nice safe cage has been repeated this line how many times this line has come one and two this line has come for the second time so this line will be coming again so this line is a refrain so the line when a uh, when some sentence is repeated when some line is repeated that we call as refrain the poetic device refrain has been used here onomatopoeia we have discussed okay so many times the alliteration has come up we will discuss that separately so when custard cried for a nice safe cage suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around now the climax is coming climax is when the event when the action of the story will be at the culminating point when you will see that the action packed story is coming now so suddenly they heard some nasty sound means very suddenly what has been repeated to mean that uh, now what is going to happen that happened actually abruptly no one was mentally prepared to handle the situation not even dragon not even belinda or blink or or anyone else so the repetition of the words suddenly shows the abrupt action that they were not mentally prepared for what was going to happen now so all of a sudden they heard a nasty sound what is nasty unpleasant sound and a mustard growl and mustard growled so the uh, and it's the habit of the dogs like whenever they would hear some unpleasant sound or some awkward sound or some new sound they would always bark first okay that's the nature of the dogs that they first they would bark so he the mustard you know barked and they all looked around mute cried ink and oh cried belinda so all creatures all pets you know they uh, they reacted as per their nature the dog barked the the kitten you know it mewed and belinda you know she just uh, 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 exclaimed who oh, for there was a pirate climbing in wind in the window window is a window only and in order to rhyme this word window with belinda the poet has used poetic license and has changed the spellings of window to winda so otherwise winda is no word it's a window only and we call it a poetic license where the poets use change the spellings of the words or change the grammatical rules to rhyme the poem so all creatures you know they uh, they reacted in their typical way uh, because like why why did they react like the, the, that th way because they had seen a pirate who had come uh, who had come inside their house uh, thereby climbing in through the window so pirate is what he is a sea robber okay he robs the people in the sea so that pirate had come in this house thereby climbing through the window right so when they saw the pirate that uh, you know uh, when they saw that robber coming entering their house they all reacted in their particular way pistol in his left hand pistol in his right so the pistol word has been repeated the repetition of the pistol shows uh it is their repetition is there to emphasize the uh to emphasize like how fierce and uh, uh, you know ferocious that man was looking he didn't look to be very soothing in appearance his appearance was very ghastly or you can say a uh, very violent one so he had the pistol in his both hands and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright so he was holding you know a sword in his teeth both hands he in both hands he had uh, pistols handguns and in his you know mouth he was holding a uh, what we say sword a small sword uh, with a handle so cutlass over here is a small sword and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright his beard was black one leg was wood so he had a long beard he had a long black beard and his one leg was artificial so he had one broken leg though he had one he was a lame uh, you know this uh, man was lame this uh, pirate was lame yet he was not less ferocious it was clear that the pirate meant no good so the way he had entered the way uh, he was looking so ferocious fully armed it was fully like it was clear that he didn't mean any good for the family that he had not come inside with good intentions it was sure shot 
Belinda paled and she cried, help, help. So it is the same Belinda who used to be considered as brave like the hub of bears. Now the same Belinda, when she saw the pirate in front of her, she became pale, her, the, she got discolored and she started asking for help. But Mustard fled with a terrified ear and uh, Mustard dog also ran away uh, as he was extremely terrified. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household. Trickled down means ran down. Even Ink, Ink was what? Cat. Even cat also ran away. She also ran towards the bottom of the household. She, uh, she hid herself somewhere uh, under the, in, somewhere at the, in the house. And the little mouse blinked strategically mouse hold. And the mouse also very, uh, in a very strategic manner, in a very smart manner, he also entered his mouse hole. Okay. So he entered the mouse hold. The kitten also uh, entered, went somewhere and hid herself. Mustard also ran away because he was terrified and Belinda was already asking for help. So the people, those who were comparing themselves to the tiger, the lions, the bears. So all those people now, they had paled, they had become terrified. But up jumped Custard. At this crucial time, when the life of all these people was in danger, when there was no chance for survival, then Custard, you know, he jumped to, uh, to action. He jumped, but jumped up a custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon with a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm. He went at the pirate like a robin at a bomb. So now the, you know, this very custard, the one who was always considered to be uh, a, a timid or a coward, that person, you know, rose to action. He jumped up means he rose to action. And uh, first of all, he... Uh, snorted like an engine. First of all, he gave a fierce cry like that of an engine. Clashed his tails like irons in a dungeon. Then he clanked or clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. So with the fierce movement of the tail, <clears throat> so this very custard, you know, who was now getting ready to attack the uh, what we say, pirate. Uh, first of all, he gave, he snorted, he gave a very fierce sound. And that fierce sound was like that of an engine, which was enough, first of all, to, uh, to frighten that pirate off his feet. Then he uh, clanked his, then he clashed his tail. Then he gave his uh, tail that fierce movement uh, as if he was a clash, as if the iron, irons in the jail were being, were being put to rub against each other with a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm. So all these clattering, clanking and jangling, you know, these are all again onomatopic words, which all uh, uh, suggest the sound. So uh, with a clatter, a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. So with all those, you know, fierce sounds, the uh, dragon attacked the pirate, the way a robin attacks a worm. So he attacked the pirate like a robin, like the robin who attacks the worms. So Custard at that crucial moment attacked the pirate with all ferocity, with all, you know, ferociousness that the pirate did not have much time to think, think what to do. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon. The pirate was like shocked. He was like stunned to see uh, this kind of creature who had come up to attack him, the one who had come to counter him. So he gaped at, gaped as, at means like he looked at him with his mouth wide open. He was shocked. Like how come this kind of creature had come to counter him or to attack him? He was stunned and looked at the dragon with his open mouth, open wide mouth and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. So when he saw that uh, fierce dragon attacking him, then he took some, uh, you know, wine or some uh, drink from his pocket and gulped it. So in order to uh, gain some, you know, energy or some, uh, you can say some uh, sort of, you know, strength, he took out the bottle, he took out the, uh, you know, drink from his pocket flagon and gulped it. Okay, he just had it. He fired two bullets. So that uh, the pirate had pistols in his hand. So he fired two bullets, but they didn't hit, but he missed. But those bullets missed the dragon 
and custard gobbled him every bit. So though that pirate attacked the dragon with his pistol, with the bullets, but um, that could not affect the dragon because the, those bullets missed the target and the, and the dragon ate up the whole of pirate. So the custard gobbled him. Him is the pirate, gobbled means ate up. So the custard, that is the dragon, ate up the pirate every bit. So he ate him up fully. So with this, when he ate him up, it means that the pirate had been killed. Okay, so from here we'll do tomorrow, only four more stanzas are left. And with these four stanzas, we'll be doing the poetic devices also tomorrow, children. So keep your notebooks also ready tomorrow. All right. Thank you all.